Now, in the denial of service, there's another thing that's called the distributed denial of service. It's a little different than what it might sound like. I'm not actually going to attack a lot of machines, but instead I'm going to get a lot of machines to attack somebody for me. And uh, that basically means that I'm going to uh, slowly own all of these systems, all of these hosts, and I'm going to turn them into what we typically call zombies. By calling it a zombie, what I basically am doing is saying I'm preloading software, uh, taking over a system, or at least getting software on a system that's going to run when I tell it to. Then I can have my handlers, when I'm ready, say launch or destroy or whatever it is. It'll send the message out to all the zombies, and the zombies, you know, just like the movies, will wake up out of the dead and uh, slowly attack the same target until I tell it to stop. Uh, the goal here is to make it hard for you to figure out who the real attacker was because it wasn't the person who issued the command, but it was all of, you know, right? Instead, you're getting attacked by all these zombies who are just unfortunate victims themselves. And it, so it hides me and gets me a large number of people. I could almost put Blaster in that category because Blaster's job was to infiltrate all the machines and make them attack Microsoft. Uh, but it wasn't necessarily distributed. It was not a wait till I tell you to attack. It was once you're infected, boom, start attacking, but very similar in concept. All right, we're gonna take a look at um, one example of a program that we would use to check for the possibility of having some sort of uh, malware in our network. It's called the DDoS ping, Distributed Denial of Service. And basically this tool was designed to help us look for signs of very common uh, denial of service uh, programs that have been infecting our machines. So the idea of a distributed denial of service, and I notice I've got to get permission to run it as an admin. The idea behind this uh, denial of service is simply to say uh, there are programs like Stockledrot and many others that infect machines and make them zombies. They install viruses and malware that, uh, that basically run hiding, uh, you know, waiting for this centralized, let's call it mothership, to go out there and say, attack, attack, attack. And so what happens is suddenly they, they call them zombies. These little machines kind of just wake up from the dead and mindlessly go and do their attacks against uh, whoever the targets are. Well, so the communications that this mothership uses will occur on specific ports, depending on the type of program. And so this little program is gonna just basically test the addresses between this range, start and end address, and look for those uh, signs of those ports being listened to. And so that's what it's, what it's going to do. Now, there could be legitimate programs running on those same ports, uh, but it, so that doesn't mean you have a zombie. It doesn't mean you have to worry. It just means you need to check even more to make sure things are safe. Now, this address range, as you can see, is a private address space. This is inside of our network. And um, if it was not, if it was actually a public range of addresses, we might want to change the speed at which we send these packets out based on the type of connectivity. So like if you're using a dial-up modem, we want to send one packet per second because those things are just incredibly slow. If you're on a cable DSL, we're a little bit faster. T1 service, which uh, some might argue is not as fast as cable, uh, a little more synchronous though, you can send out more packets. Or if you're on a LAN, and you're hardwired in and there's not a lot of traffic, you can just max this thing out to uh, as many packs as possible. Uh, we are on a LAN. I'm not scanning a network range. If this was a public range of addresses, I'd certainly dumb this down because I'd rather uh, be slow than miss anything uh, from having congestion. But we're on our local LAN and I'm going to have that uh, go out there and do the scan. It's going to check each of these hosts and uh, run against three or four, maybe five different ports uh, for each of these uh, different types of infections. Now this tool is uh, from Foundstone. Uh, some of the scans that it's going to look for, some of the infections are very old. Uh, things that have already been patched, uh, you know, many years ago, some of them. But it's an example, I'm going to call it a proof of concept type of an option. So I'm going to click on start. It's sending all these packets out. You can see down here, it's going to send out uh, several, like I said, three to five um, for each of these devices. And now that the packets have been sent out, we're really waiting for the results to come back in. Uh, it's one of those things where we sent out a blast and waited for things to come back and programs stopped and it looks like we had uh, no infected hosts. I actually hoped we didn't. Let me click on the configuration here real quick and you can get an idea of some of the uh, type supports like Trinu, Stockledrot, Tribe Flood. Um, again, it's looking for just these specific types of uh, ports and protocols um, that 
we would get responses back from if they were infected. All of these are old. Again, it's a proof of concept type of a, of a design, but it lets you see that it's uh, there's many tools out there. Now, if we were to go out here to the internet, there's all sorts of goodies out here, especially on uh, my friend Google, or I guess now I have to talk about Bing as well. Uh, so I'm going to hit Google, and I'm going to look for uh, what we call a vulnerability um, scanner. And there, oops, there they are. Now there's one site here. Now Nessus uh, is, is very popular because it used to be very free uh, that people would use. But I'm going to use this um, top 10 vulnerability scanner site. You can see I've visited it before. Uh, Insecure.org or Sec Tools up here, security tools. And here's just a list of top 10s that tell you by uh, which operating system they work on, whether or not they're free with the uh, good old dollar sign. And, uh, and so here you get the uh, ideas. You see some, and these are all web scanners, really. Nick2, Paris Proxy, Web Scarab, Web Inspect, Whisker, Burp Suite. I like this, made by Port Swigger. Maybe you get the joke. You drink enough, swig enough port, you're going to burp. WIC2, uh, Rational, and Stealth. Uh, so again, and Stealth, examples of ones that you can uh, pay for. Um, packet Crafting, Vulnerability Exploitation Tools, Packet Sniffers. Uh, again, just looking at this, these lists of, uh, of uh, locations to go out and grab this stuff and uh, download it so you can try it out. Some of them, even though they cost money, you can use for uh, a, a trial option, you know, a 30-day trial or something like that. Uh, rootkit detectors, again, just lots of options to, uh, to use and grab these tools to pretty much use them like I did, did the uh, DDoS ping, and that is going out there and looking for signs of having infections or dangerous uh, programs running on my network.